All right, guys, hello and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. And this one, we're gonna be talking about how you can work with layers in After Effects. So here I have this layer here, it's called this fire layer that I've brought in and uh, it looks interesting. Now I want you guys to first notice this black line that we have here. This is indicating to us when the footage begins and we also have this black on the last part of our layer here as well. This is telling us where the footage ends and beyond these black lines, there is no footage. So if I drag it out, the footage uh, disappears. There's no more frames. Now with our layers, we are able to move them like this if we want. And if you want to snap it to the time head, all you do is drag your time head to where you want it to be. And then you press shift and then drag your layer and it will snap. And we can also trim our layers as well. So we can grab the end of the layer like this, press shift to snap it to the time head. We can drag this end part here. Good. And if you want to see a quick shortcut to actually trim your layers, all you have to do is press alt and left bracket to trim the first part of the layer and it will cut it there. And then you can press alt and right bracket and that will trim the end part of the layer. And now we will have a new in and out point of our layer. So if I press I to jump to the end point of my layer, it doesn't bring me here, but it brings me here. This is the new end point. And if I press O to jump to the end point of my layer, it brings me not here, but to here. So that's how you can um, mess with the end and out points of your layers. And that's how you can trim your clips. So now let us try to actually drag in another layer and see what happens. Now, if we want to drag something else in like this seaside clip, we could just simply drag it in like this and we can put it underneath the layer or we could put it on top of the layer. I'll put it on top and notice that it just comes in. But what if I wanted it to come in at a certain spot in my composition? Well, I'm going to delete this here and then I'm going to drag my clip and notice that now it has this time indicator on it. And this is telling me where the clip is going to start once I release my mouse. Now notice too that once I'm moving this, the time here on the left is moving as well. And this is telling me the exact time that the clip is going to be placed. And if I wanted to put it at a specific spot, like say right where this time indicator is, all I would have to do is press shift and then it would snap right to where my time indicator is. And then I'm going to release. And now notice that my clip was placed right where the other time indicator was. So that is how you can drag in new clips and place them precisely in a certain area. All right, so now I want to show you guys how you can actually move the footage inside of your in and out points. So let's say we didn't like this spot of our clip and we wanted to adjust what is actually appearing in this area here. Well, we could simply go over here and then notice that our mouse cursor changes and we can actually move it and now the footage inside of our clip here will actually be different. And we can do this for the end as well. If we wanted the clip to end right about here, we could drop it there and the clip would end there. So that is how you can actually adjust what is in the end and out point of your clips. Now there's another way that you can do this. You could simply take your pan behind tool or press Y to bring it up. And then you could actually just drag on the actual layer that we trimmed and notice that it is moving the footage that is inside of the clip. Now for this to work, you need to make sure that you actually have something trimmed off a little bit. If there's no uh, footage before this, you're not able to drag any further out. There's no frames. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, good. So now I want to show you guys how all of this works with text. So I'm going to write some text here and I'll call this Seaside. Like this. Notice if I grab the pan behind tool and I try to slide it, nothing is happening. That's because the text is like infinite here and nothing is going to uh, change. But look what would happen if I was to put a keyframe down. So I'll put like a keyframe right here and then another one right here. And I'll just move the text up like this. Notice what happens if I move the layer now. Notice the layer is moving with the one keyframe that I selected. And if I selected this one here and I moved it, it would move as well with the layer. And if I selected both, well, they would both move like that. 
And it's the same down here as well with keyframes. So if I put a keyframe right here and I put one, say like right here, and then I just move it like this, the one keyframe moves and that's what you have. Now, I want you to notice these opaque lines that you have right here. This is just something that you should notice in After Effects. When you have these lines, it's basically saying this is where you created your layer. And these white lines here are basically indicating how much of the layer was not originally at the start. So that's what those lines represent. Now, what if I wanted to actually split the layer or cut it? How could I do this? Well, all you have to do is simply go up to edit here and then you select split layer or you can press control shift D or command shift D on a Mac. So I'm just going to press control shift D and then boom, it split exactly where my playhead was. And notice how another layer has been created where it was split and it was put on top. Now, if you want this layer to be on the bottom, all you have to do is simply go up to edit and then go to preferences, general, and then right here where it says create split layers above original layer, you will uncheck this. Press OK. Good. And then I will delete this and we'll just drag this out a little bit longer and we'll split it again. So Control Shift D. And then now notice that it was split, but the new layer is now on the bottom. All right, guys. So now I want to show you how you can trim your work area in After Effects. So here I have my composition here with my footage and this composition is extremely long. It's over a minute long and I want to shorten it. So let's say I want it only to show the area from this 10 second mark right here to about the 30 second mark. Well, I could just go here and then you could either drag this handle here, which is called the work area start like this, or you could simply press B and it will snap there. And then you could go to the 30 and then you can zoom out and pull your other handle here, which is called the work area end. So I'm going to pull that back, press shift to make it snap. And you can also press N for it to snap to a certain area as well. So if I drag it out and I press N, it snaps to where the playhead is. Now I want to trim my composition just to be this area here. All I have to do is right click like this and then press trim comp to work area. And then boom, it is done. So now my composition consists of just that area that I had marked out. Now notice that in my timer over here, it doesn't start at zero, but it starts at the nine seconds and 23 where we put the playhead at. And it ends at the 29 seconds and 23 frames. Now, if I wanted this to say zero seconds and zero frames, all I would have to do is simply right click, go up to composition settings, and then here, I'll just delete this and I'll press zero and then boom. Notice that it changes here and then I press OK and now it's at zero. And then if I go here, it's at 20. Now in all reality, there is actually one frame left in this composition. If I zoom up, you'll see it here, right here, this last frame. And if I go under composition settings, I'll see it right here. So it's 20 seconds and one frame left over. So that's how you can trim your compositions and I hope that you will give it a try. All right guys, so now I'm gonna show you how you can actually use the, the lift and the extract in After Effects. So I'm gonna set my work area start right here by pressing B and then I'll set my end work area by pressing N to be right here. And then I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna select lift work area. Notice what happens, I selected Basically, After Effects deleted everything that was in between my work area and it split my layers so that what was on the left of my work area is right here and what was on the right of my work area is now here. Now I'm going to go back by pressing Ctrl Z and now we're going to look at the extract work area and we are going to select it. Boom. Basically, the same thing happened as the lift work area, but this layer that was over here was shifted back to where our other layer is. So basically the extract works the same as the lift, but it removes the space and it brings the layer on the right side all the way to the layer on the left side. So that's how the extract works. 
All right, guys, so now what I'm gonna show you is how you can actually sequence your layers. So I'm just gonna grab all of this here and then I'm gonna drag it all the way down like this, good. Now notice that it's all stacked on each other, but I'm going to right click on it and then I'm gonna go up to keyframe assistant and then down to sequence layers, good. Now notice what would happen if I just pressed okay. I'll leave overlap unchecked Notice that it puts them in a sequence like this, and then like this, and then like this, and there's no overlap duration. If you want an overlap, you can add it. So I'll just undo that, right click, go up to keyframe assistant, sequence layers, and then press overlap, and you can add your duration and your transitions. So we'll do dissolve the front layer, and then we'll add a three second duration for the overlap. Press okay. And now notice that we have our layers sequenced like this. I'll actually lower the quality a little bit so that we can play through it. It's coming in slow, but you guys can see the transition. Now, one more thing I wanna show you guys with this. Delete this. Notice that the order that you select your clips, and that is gonna be the order that they are sequenced. So I'll click the fire here first, and we'll make this one actually the same size as our comp because this one was like half size. Click on the fire, and then I'll select the tree, and then the C side, right click, go up to keyframe assistant, sequence layers. I'll leave the overlap off this time, and then press okay, and then boom, they're sequenced in the order that you selected them. All right guys, so now we're going to look at the source panel. So I made a new composition here and I have my footage up here and I'm going to actually double click on it. Notice that my composition panel has been moved over to the side like this. And now I have this footage panel and it's named after the heart, uh, 32264, the name of my clip. And I have this timeline down here. And I can scrub through my clip or scrub through my footage. Now let's say I wanted to insert maybe from two seconds all the way to six seconds. I could put my playhead here and then press this endpoint, or I could click on the time and I could put two seconds, so two, zero, zero, press okay. And then I will select this endpoint right here. And then for six seconds, I'll click on this timer down here again, press six, zero, zero for six seconds. And then I'll select my set out point. And here it tells me actually the duration of what I have selected. Now, if I select my heart now and drag it into my composition, notice that the area that I selected or set the in and out points at is now the area that is, let me just move this for you guys. This is now the area that is being shown in my layer here down in the composition. I'll drag this out over here a little bit so you can see better. Now, let's say I wanted to change this. Well, I couldn't go up to here and then try to drag this out. Nothing would happen. And I would actually have to drag in a new clip and then this new clip would show the extra footage that I just dragged out like this. So that's how you can mess with the footage panel and the times of your clips. And this is great for when you're just trying to pick out certain clips in your footage. Now I'm gonna show you guys how you can use the overlay edit and this ripple insert edit. So I'm going to drag in our tree footage here, like this, and then I will put my playhead right about here, and then I'll select the overlay edit, like this, and then now notice that I have my footage here, and that my heart footage was actually overlain over my tree footage. And I'll just bump up the quality here so you guys can see it a little bit better. So the overlay simply stacks your layer on top of the other layer and starts from where your playhead is selected. I'll delete this. What would happen though if we selected the ripple insert edit though? Select it. Notice that from the area that our heart clip comes in to the area that it ends, all of our tree footage in between this area was actually deleted. So that's what the ripple insert edit does. It brings in your new clip and then the clip that is underneath it, it deletes that area from it. All right, lastly, we are going to deal with the layer panel. 
So I'm actually gonna close my footage panel here. And now I just have this composition panel. And let's say I wanted to actually change uh, just part of the edit from, from our footage here. Well, I won't be able to do that. If I make edits here in the footage, nothing's gonna change here. So this layer is now separate from your footage. If you wanna actually make edits to this layer, you have to double click on it. And then this layer panel comes up. So we will make this a little bit bigger. And in here we have different options. So we can set the endpoint to be right here. Notice how it changes in our composition as well. I'll set the out point to right here. And notice if I make the changes down here as well, it changes up here as well. And not only this, we have different options that we can look at in this panel. We have the brush option now where we can draw. We can now brush on our layer if we want like this. We have also the clone stamp tool right here, which basically you press alt and then you copy an area like in Photoshop and then you would draw here. And then this area appears like that. We have the eraser tool. We could delete certain areas that we don't want. We have the roto brush tool and we have the different roto brush looks. And then we have different views. So like none, mask, anchor point, paints so you can see your paint strokes and the erase strokes and then the roto brush view as well so, so that's just a little bit about how you can actually um, use the layer panel to make edits to your layer and i hope that you will give it a try and we will see you in the next video until next time